coming to you live from Rotary International Headquarters in Evanston. Hello and welcome. We are excited to have you join us today and to share some of the fresh ways clubs are crafting their membership experiences by embracing fun, yes fun, and the flexibility options that we are now offering to clubs. My name is Rebecca Holloway and I am the Regional Membership Officer for Zones 21A, 33, and 34, which is how I met today's guest presenter. As one of Rotary's Regional Membership Officers, with the District and Zone Leaders to grow and strengthen Rotary's membership by sharing resources, data, and best practices that assist clubs in better engaging their current members and improving their club. A lot of fun stuff. I also get to attend zone level meetings, such as institutes and leadership trainings, to discuss strategies for new membership initiatives and obtain feedback from people like you. I really do look like the person on the screen, so if you see me in real life, please say hi. So before we get started, um, it's important to cover how you can best participate in the webinar today. Each of you have your own control panel, which is on the right side of your screen, and it looks similar to the one here. So use the orange arrow to open or close your control panel. We've got a great number of attendees today, so in order to maintain the highest sound quality possible, unfortunately we're going to have to mute you all except for our panelists. So we really do encourage you to submit questions and comments to our panelists, to myself and other Rotary staff members here by using the question box on your attendee control panel. So if you look for the question box towards the bottom and you're having tef technical difficulties, please just describe the problems that you're having and type them in that panel. Um, let's take a moment to practice using the question box. So please type your name and where you're joining us from. Let us know what you ate for breakfast if you want to share that as well. All right, we see some people coming in already. We've got Mike and Mary Ann from Canada. We've got, oh my goodness, people coming in from all over. So quickly, I can't read them. Oh, somebody from El Paso, Texas, which is my hometown. We've got people from Mexico, British Columbia, Michigan, you name it. Sierra Leone, wow, we've got real representation from across the world. So it looks like you guys know how to use the, the uh, question box. Um, so it's my pleasure now to introduce our special guest for today, District Governor Harish Ramchandani from Rotary Club of Montego Bay, East in Jamaica, it's District 7020. So I've had the pleasure of working with Harish uh, over the past year, and in May, I was actually able to spend time with him in the Bahamas, welcome, welcoming him and his district team into their leadership positions during their district training and president-elect training. During that week, the energy Harush fostered within his district, which, mind you, is made up of 10 countries and multiple languages, was profound. He encourages Rotarians to create the best experience they can for themselves and for others, and to create value, and really to laugh. This man knows how to throw a great party and have a great time. He's a friend, a family man, a leader, and a Rotarian. Please welcome me in joining District Governor Harush. Wow, thank you, Rebecca. And hello, my fellow Rotarians from across the Rotary world. It's indeed a pleasure uh, to spend some time with you this morning and to have this conversation on a topic very, very close to my heart and one that I'm very passionate about. So a little bit of backstory. I joined Rotary some 19 years ago with the Rotary Club of Montego Bay East in beautiful Jamaica. And I'm really honored to be serving this year as governor for my district 7020, which as you heard, encompasses about 10 countries, 15 islands, 83 Rotary Clubs, over 50 Rotaract, and over 80 Interact Clubs in multiple languages. Quite diverse, quite interesting. And my friends, this topic of revitalizing and rethinking your Rotary Club has perhaps never been more critical. It is indeed a changing world and a changing time. Now my Rotary Club meets on a Thursday evening at 7 p.m. And 7 p.m. is what I call prime time. It competes with dinner time with my wife and two kids. It competes with my favorite TV shows. And it competes with my wine club. And if I'm going to leave and attend my club meeting and I don't get value from it, where do you think it's going to happen next week? Or the week after that? Or the week after that? So value is different for everyone. It could be fellowship that I came and I was able to enjoy my friends. It could be 
that there was a great speaker and it gave me some professional or personal development. It could be that I was able to lend my talent to help someone in need. Whatever the reason is, my friends, your club needs to be able to give value. You need to be able to provide value to your members. You need to be able to provide value to your Rotary Club. Your members' time is precious, my friends. You need to treat it that way. Harish, so I don't need to pop in, but uh, really quickly, we're he hearing some feedback on our end. Can you just be sure that all of your speakers are properly muted, or if any anything's showing up, uh, we just want to make sure we've got the best sound quality possible. Right. I'm not sure where that feedback is coming from. Is that better? Okay. Yep. Sounds a lot okay. better. Thanks, Harish. Right, perfect. So tell me, my friends. Have you thought about your experience in your club? This is something that we encourage members to do, some sort of introspection. We can reflect on whether we look forward to attending our club meetings, our service projects, and even our Rotary events. What about your fellow club members? What about their experience? Sometimes it's easy to spot, I can tell you. It's what we call anecdotal evidence. But sometimes it's, uh, it's not that easy to spot, and that's why we need data. And, and one of the reasons we ask clubs to track attendance and to do surveys, surveys such as SurveyMonkey is, is a pretty good one to use. These, 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 these mechanisms allow us to put this information together and kind of understand uh, what the experience of your, of your club members are all about. A great tool you could also do is what we call the keep, start, and stop approach. Imagine you take a piece of paper and you have three lines on it. What would you like to keep? What would you like to start? And what would you like to stop? You just hand it to your members at a club meeting, pretty anonymous, and you'll be pleasantly surprised at what the results uh, uh, show us. Thanks for introducing the poll. You've got about 30 seconds to tell us, does your club regularly assess its health and strength? Just click the boxes on the screen, and I'll uh, let you know what the poll says in just a second. Got a couple more seconds. Here we go. All right, so what you can see is that 44% of uh, attendees today said yes, their club does regularly assess its health, but a whopping 56% said no, they don't. Okay, great. Well, that's interesting. So we're going to give you some resources that you can use that can probably help you if you want to assess the strength. And there are three resources that I can, uh, I'd like to share with you. The first one is the Membership Assessment Tools, which is a customer satisfaction survey. The other one is a Club Visioning Exercise, document number 417. And the third one is a very new one called the Rotary Club Health Check. And we're just going to delve a little bit into each one of them. Now, Club Visioning <clears throat> is quite, quite interesting. You're bringing your entire membership together and you're kind of focusing on, on several different elements. You're looking at long range and even short term plans. You're looking at everyone coming together and making decisions on what direction the club is going to go in with projects, but also what the whole vision for, the, for that Rotary Club is going to look like from the very new member to the most senior member in the club. So the visioning exercise for the clubs that have done it have, have had some tremendous results and something that we would highly recommend for you to try in your Rotary Club. The other document that recently came out is the Rotary Club Health Check, and it has been very, very well received by several clubs that have implemented this check. It creates this positive uh, Rotary experience for the members, and of course, when Rotary, Rotary members have great these positive experiences, they're likely to stay. And in turn, that experience uh, rubs off on others. It's, it's contagious. And if your members are genuinely enjoying being part of their club, that means your club is on the right path. So some of the questions that comes out of this health check is, do you look forward to attending your club meetings? Is your club meeting programs relevant, interesting, and varied? Do you have a greeter who welcomes members to meetings? Are your meetings organized and professionally run? Do members sit at different tables each week to meet and talk to different people? 
So by having your members go through these questionnaires, it really kind of paints a picture of, of, of where your club is at and perhaps where you need to go. So after clubs have gone through these visioning exercises and health checks, here are some of the things that have popped out. If you take a look at what are the five reasons that people are leaving their Rotary Club, one of them is personality conflicts. And yes, that is a real thing. It exists in, in several, in probably almost all Rotary Clubs. There are going to be different individuals with different personalities and every once, every once in a while you will have situations arise that, that, that they have a conflict. There's also when you start to have a conflict with the leadership of the club. Many times you may not agree the direction the club is going at and these things tend to have issues with why members leave. The other thing very, very important you need to be aware of is when the members feel unwanted and neglected, especially the newer members. And the more senior ones tend to feel disengaged. It's not the same club that they were a part of. And all of a sudden, you, they slowly just disappear. Another issue is when you've got personal family issues or your vocational priorities change and you may have to leave the territory that you're in. Another thing that always pops up is resistance to change and innovation. And as you can see from the quote here, trying to resist change, my friends, is like holding your breath. Even if you're successful, it doesn't end well. So we're going to talk about change um, in, in a little bit, but I just want to kind of take you to the very beginning. And my friends, you see Rotary has been changing from the very beginning. You know Paul Harris came together with his three business colleagues and they started Rotary for fellowship and networking and that it has evolved into this powerful means to give back to their communities. This concept of the classification principle that everyone brings a strength and expertise or experience to Rotary is still celebrated today. The vocational service element is one that still allows Rotary to be very unique in the scape of service as an organization. Sure, the attendance rules were meant to ensure that you showed up and that if you didn't, it was felt that you would not be able to make a meaningful difference in your club with your members and your community. But now the council and legislation has allowed for this increased flexibility and change. Some Rotarians felt that we were scaring off potential members because it's a different world today and that there are many, many other ways that we can make a, a meaningful contribution. I often reflect on Paul Harris's quote from the 1930 Rotary International Convention. If Rotary is to realize its proper destiny, it must be evolutionary at all times, revolutionary on occasions. And this Council on Legislation was indeed revolutionary and evolutionary. Now we're going to talk a little bit about some of those changes shortly. But we were talking about surveys earlier. <clears throat> Several clubs, districts, and even Rotary International have done them. But let me share with you one that will perhaps put some clarity to these two questions. Why do members join Rotary and why do they stay? Now when, you, when we looked at the survey, what, what popped out on us was that the top two reasons of why Rotarians initially joined was to positively impact their community and for friendship and fellowship. And then when we looked at why they stayed, just take a look at this for the same reasons, to positively impact their community and for friendship and fellowship. So my friends, this is telling us that fellowship and making a difference in their communities are the main areas to focus on when we think about crafting the member experience. Now we know most Rotarians spend the majority of their Rotary experience at the club meeting, so we went even further and surveyed what was important at the club meeting. And you can see from this chart that the meeting program and the service projects and programs are what is very important to Rotarians. And then we went even further to see what was important to Rotarians at the club meeting. And what pops out? Great fellowship, great speakers, networking opportunities, opportunities for professional and personal development, and of course opportunities to make a difference in their communities by giving back. So those are some of the results of the survey. My friends, as we think about revitalizing and rethinking your club, we need to also remember to craft this Rotary experience for our members. Your members are your customers. So the question is, are you satisfying the needs of your customers? Are they enjoying their meetings? Are they enjoying their Rotary Club? Are you? 
This is a great segue to go into our next question. Using the question box, please send us a short answer to the following question. What change would you like to see your club make to your club meeting? It can be as simple as a change of location, or perhaps you'd like to have better meeting programs or speakers. Again, these are just a couple options. We'd love to know what your short response is. All right, I already see a number of um, answers coming in, so keep your answers short so I can read through those in just a second. And thank you for participating. Wow, what I'm seeing right now is we've got a lot of people saying that they're looking for better speakers and a better program, um, improved location and venue, more diversity, seeing, seeing some things coming in with humor, bringing in younger members, more intentional interactions, and of course, better food. Who doesn't want that? These are all great answers. Thanks for, um, for sharing. There's so many people on. We can't read through all of these, obviously, but really, a lot of diversity, female members, better food, better speakers, those are some things that I'm seeing a lot of. Harish, back to you. Thanks, Rebecca. Well, that's great. I'm really happy to hear these answers. Now, to craft this member experience, it has one fundamental action point that, for it to be successful. You've got to communicate with your members. Pick up the phone and call them. Have a cup of coffee with them. Ask them these very questions of what's important to them. What are some of the changes they would like to see in their Rotary Club? It's only when you're able to do that will this picture actually start to take shape. Now, several times I hear from Rotary Clubs, oh, that we can't change. We cannot rethink our club. It's too entrenched in tradition, and we cannot change our tradition. Okay, I get that. There are sentimental values attached to, uh, to these things. But as humans, we are an evolutionary being. The world isn't the same 111 years ago when Rotary started as it is today. And ultimately, we need to remember what the purpose of Rotary is, what our core values are. Fellowship, service, leadership, diversity, and integrity. Sometimes, my friends, we have to use what works and lose the rest. And the thing about tradition is we own our traditions. Our traditions don't own us. So if it's not working, sometimes we just have to change it. And this is why I am a very, very excited for this evolutionary and revolutionary and most progressive council on legislation and some of the decisions that were taken. They essentially have taken off the shackles from us Rotarians and our Rotary Clubs. They are empowering us to try new things, to be flexible. Now, the thing about the, these new uh, flexibility options on the table is that it is going to allow us as Rotarians to paint what the new Rotary is going to look like. And believe me, even though it's an honor, it is a huge responsibility, my friends. And the decisions that you take this year are going to impact what the Rotary of tomorrow is going to look like. My friends, Rotary's legacy is in your hands. So you need to have the conversation with your members and decide where do you want your Rotary Club to go. And what do you want it to look like? And what and is it going to be relevant to your members and to your community? Now, some of the decisions that were taken, uh, one of them was the change to meeting frequency. I know traditionally we've had uh, four meetings a month, uh, weekly meetings rather. And we've seen clubs have gone down to two. Some have gone to three. Some went up to six. There was even a club that went up to eight meetings a month because they were enjoying each other's company so much that they wanted to spend more time with each other. But meeting frequency is an opportunity that you have that you can actually reshape uh, what your club is going to look like. So you need to consider that as an option when you're having your conversations with your members. The next thing is meeting venues. Again, you can change. Different locations offer different advantages. And the, the beauty of changing venues, you're able to expose Rotary to those that have never, maybe never heard of Rotary, or maybe had wondered what it was all about, but never really seen Rotary in action. So you can change the venues to suit that and create that experience. You can talk about what your, your, your Rotarian's passions are all about. For example, if one likes, like, likes to sail, you could probably have a club meeting on a boat. So there are several options available now with the flexibility model and changing the meeting venues uh, is, all, is one of them. 
The other thing you can do is to change the purpose of the Rotary Club meeting. You can have just a fellowship or a happy hour hangout meeting. You could have your club meeting at a Rotary Club service project. You could change your meetings to, to meet at Rotarians' homes. You can do an online meeting as an option. You could even create satellite clubs and start to be able to reach out to individuals that could probably not make your regular club meeting and have a satellite club meeting and, and start to meet over there periodically. So again, ch changing the meeting purpose is a great option on the table that you can embrace and create some spark and, and excitement to your club meeting. Another area I know it was mentioned in the question was diversity. Diversifying your club is a great opportunity to engage more people and to grow your club and to create a more, uh, a more fun and strong club. Ethnicity, age diversity, vocational diversity, gender diversity. Take advantage of, of one of our core values, my friends, and diversify your club. You'll be pleasantly surprised how it creates a more engaging experience. Another key area, we spoke about it on the survey about making a difference in the community as to one of the reasons Rotarians join and stay. Service, invigorate and engage your club through service. You know, whenever we go to Rotarians and we tell them, tell us what your Rotary story is all about. Inevitably, what's going to pop out is some impact it made in the life of somebody else or a community. You see, my friends, we're not just a social club. We give back. We're serving humanity. So using the opportunities to engage through service is so important and it's one of the fundamental things that, wrote through, that Rotarians think about when they talk about their, their Rotary story. Now here's a picture of President John. He came to Jamaica uh, with several district governors from zones 33 and 34 and basically what they all did, we came together and built a peace garden. It was a great opportunity to service while at the same time visiting um, a different Rotary territory. Service again. When you're thinking about it, it's a great opportunity to engage all different members and find what their passions are and find something that's close to their heart. So use, use, use service to engage and invigorate your club. Now here's a wonderful opportunity that maybe you could think about. Imagine if you went to your club members and you took them on a tour, right? All from your newest member right up to your most senior member. You took them on a tour of all the service projects that your club has done. Uh, since the beginning perhaps. Take them on a journey, or maybe a half a day or a one day tour of their community. Great fellowship on board. You're visiting all the projects. You're remembering the impact that your service projects and your Rotary Club has made in the lives of individuals and their community. What a great opportunity to fellowship together, to have these memories brought back to the forefront as to the core of, of who we are and what we do. We make a difference in people's lives. Great opportunity to craft that Rotary experience. Now what else can we do to craft this Rotary experience? I would like you to look at it from three perspectives. The younger member, the more experienced professionals, and of course the senior and retired members. And they all have a role to play, my friends, and their, their, crafting their experience is going to be quite different for each one of these groups. Now there was a survey that I had heard some time ago about uh, what Rotarians are primarily interested in. And, and Rotary age 0 to 5, they were primarily interested in networking. Uh, Rotary age 5 to 20, they were primarily interested in service. And Rotary age 20 and over, they were primarily interested in fellowship. So you can see, my friends, when you look at these different demographics, we have to consider it from their perspective. You have to craft the experience from their perspectives. So when it comes to the newer member, one of the things we say is don't go too fast with them. Take it slow understand where they're coming from, what their opportunities they're looking for is at, and then craft that experience slowly from their perspective. Maybe even have them as part of the crafting of that experience. Have them sit in the committee meetings or the board meetings and say, well, where, where exactly would you like to see your new club go to? And, and maybe help them, uh, let, let them help uh, pave the way for that. Similarly with the senior and retired members. Ask them what it is that they would like to do with their club meetings. You might be pleasantly surprised just having that conversation of, of where their mindset is at. Another opportunity is when you're crafting the experience, look at it from their hobbies and passions. And I can tell you, when it comes to hobbies, there are several Rotary fellowships out there. Like I love wine, as I said in the beginning, there is a Rotary Wine Appreciation Fellowship. Similarly, if you've got a particular cause that you're passionate about, for example, diabetes, 
you can join an action group for that. So these are great opportunities outside of the four walls of your Rotary Club that you can get your members engaged in. Amazing opportunities uh, to have them engaged and more passionate about with Rotary. So highly recommend you take advantage of those. Online presence, social media is big right now and it is free. There are 1.7 billion people on Facebook right now. And the, I ask you a simple question. Are you sharing your experiences in Rotary on these social media platforms? So amazing if you just took a photograph and shared it of an impact your club is having in your community. I mean, it, it just grab it. Ways, meaningful ways to have a good experience and to give back. And, and social media is a wonderful opportunity to take advantage of that. This takes us to our next poll. Which of these social media platforms does your club use? You saw the screen a while ago, uh, and there were several on. So let's see what, what the feedback is. All right, check all of the options that apply for your club. Which of these social media platforms does your club use? Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Snapchat? You've got a couple more seconds to um, put in your answer. A couple more seconds. About 75% of you have voted. Get those votes in. All right, so here we are. Not to a surprise, 96% of clubs are using Facebook. 23% are using Twitter, which, you know, one of my personal favorites. LinkedIn, we've got 13%. Instagram, 10%. And not too many folks on Snapchat, although I hear that's pretty hot with the younger generations. Harish, back to you. Thanks, Rebecca. That's pretty interesting that Facebook uh, is quite up there, which it, it kind of gives me something for you to think about as well as we move on. How many of you check in at your weekly club meeting? You know, Facebook has this check-in feature. What a great opportunity to tell everybody that you're at your Rotary Club meeting and you are being inspired by the speaker today. Something to think about. All right, great. Let's move on. So another thing we want to talk about at our regular club meetings is the themed meeting concept. Uh, you could change up things on a weekly basis and have different themes, and we're going to share some wonderful ideas that clubs have done as a way to just make things more exciting. Great way when you get your feedback from your members, you know, if there's something in particular they would like to see done. Great opportunity at your club meeting to, to make that, that idea the theme of the meeting. Now here are some clubs that have done a program called Lunch with a Leader, or you could say Breakfast with a Leader, or Dinner with a Leader. Basically you're connecting with, the, with, with, with high school kids or, 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 or inner city community kids primary school kids, bringing them to your club meeting, sitting down and having a meal uh, with you, the Rotary Club leaders, and just having a conversation and getting a feel and exposing them to, to leadership opportunities, to service, and, and to making a difference out there. Another thing you could probably look at is what you don't know about me. You know, many times we're spending time at our club meetings with our fellow Rotarians. The question is, do you really know them? Sure, we know the, what they do for a living, what their vocation is. But do you really, really know them, what their passions are, what they're probably both very good at in school? I mean, it's a great opportunity to use your club meeting as a theme to get to know your fellow Rotarians. Networking, one of the key elements that, that, that Rotarians always list as things that they look forward to uh, in Rotary. You could have networking opportunities within your club meeting set up as a theme. Great way to, to have your Rotarians exposed to others and also people from the community to understand and to meet your fellow Rotarians. Always fun, adding f fun to the four-way test. Always think about that when you're planning your meeting program. Is it going to be fun? You know, uh, you know, when you always look at these charts and surveys, when meetings are boring, it's always a turn off to club members. So try and f add fun element whenever you're doing your planning for your meetings. Here's an interesting concept, mystery meeting. So imagine now you set up a meeting with a theme that nobody's aware of. Nobody's going to know where you're going to be meeting. Nobody's going to understand what the theme or the concept of the meeting is all about. And at the very last minute, maybe an hour or two hours before the meeting starts, 
everybody gets an email or a text message um, advising them of where. So it kind of brings this, 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 this awe to the meeting. Everybody looks forward to, oh my goodness, I wonder what's coming up next. So mystery meeting is something that's uh, quite interesting, quite different, and it might be a great way to spark some fun into your club. Here are some opportunities, popular game shows that, that we're all exposed to. Uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Rotary Jeopardy. These are great templates that are available that you can actually create, um, use it as a theme for the meeting, as a Rotary awareness program. Amazing questions that can be Rotary tailored. And it's a great way to have fun in the club meeting and engage more people. Uh, we know the, the TV show, Wife Swap, that's not what this is about. Imagine if you've got a cluster of clubs in the area and you decide to, to swap presidents for a week. So your club president becomes the president of another Rotary Club just for that weekly meeting. Great opportunity to see how another Rotary Club operates. Great way to see what the, uh, um, what the club is doing as far as outreach is concerned. Great way to see some ideas that, that, that are great engagement tools. So this is some little things that you can change things up around and really have fun with Rotary, especially if you've got a group of clubs in the area. Another thing you can do is take advantage of great programs that are successful out there, like American Idol or Americans Got Talent, and, and tailor it to Rotary. You could do it as a fundraiser or just as a fun thing in your club meeting. Take advantage of these one or opportunities that other Rotary clubs have started doing. You could also do things differently in your Rotary club meeting for that week. You could invite your alumni, your Rotaract, your Interact to come and actually run the meeting for that week. Or you could invite your family, your kids, your spouses to come and actually take over the club meeting. Let the, the, the spouse of the president be the president for that week and, and, and et cetera across, across all the different um, areas that your club is going to be doing. Or you could probably even make your newest member president of the day. Some great way to make fun in the club meetings and create wonderful experiences for Rotarians. You could also do, imagine if you've had Rotarians or, or, or people that have supported your club in the past, maybe a sponsorship or they lent a hand in a service project or did some fundraising um, support with you. You could invite them to your club meeting and say, you know what, this is theme is thank you. We just want to say thank you so much for everything you've done. Or if it's a former member that has left and for whatever reason they're no longer part of your club, you could invite them back to a reunion meeting and say, hey, you know, you've been missing for five years, seven years, ten years, whatever the case may be. We want to let you know this is where Rotary is now. We have the new change in flexibility model in place, and, you know, this is what we've been up to since you've been gone. So if you're ever interested, this is what your new Rotary Club looks like. Similarly, you, instead of having a keynote speaker or guest speaker, as some, some of you call it, come up to the lectern and give a talk, you could do it interview style, like Jay Leno or David Letterman show. You've got a couch, you've got a sofa and you've got uh, someone doing the questions and interview. You know, it's a great way to, to spice things up and, and, and make some changes in your Rotary experience. So my friends, we've had some wonderful ideas that we've shared with you. We've had some, some interesting insight that I want you to have some good take backs on. We're going to be opening it up to question and answer shortly, but I just want you to make a note of some of these takeaways, or what we call your next steps after you leave this webinar. Uh, ask your club what they want. You can use the Rotary Club Health Check, this great new document that's, that's been doing wonderful. You've got the membership assessment tools. You've got the club visioning exercise that you could use. You could create an action plan for your club. You know, find out what they, wanted, what they want and how you're going to get there together. My friends, it is a evolving world. Rotary is also evolving. The Council on Legislation has allowed clubs to be more flexible. They have embraced change. We want you to be the change, to bring value to your members, to bring value to Rotary. Revitalize and rethink your Rotary Club and to craft this membership experience, my friends. It comes down to you. I wish you all the best as you, as you, as you plan for the year ahead. And at this point, Rebecca, we're going to open up to questions. I'm sure there are right, thank you. Yeah, Harash, they are already coming in. Thank you so much for offering your advice and your, your personal experiences to membership and revitalizing and rethinking the club. You had so many excellent ideas. People are just coming in right and left saying, where do we find the templates for Jeopardy and who wants to be a millionaire because I think it's so cool. So um, I've heard that you're okay with sharing these out, but do you yes, think we absolutely. could maybe um, 
Great. That's fabulous. I'll give you a second to take a breather. We had a great comment come in uh, from Gina earlier. I just want to share with everybody who's still on a suggestion that um, her club is doing. They'll be implementing a new member coffee chat, which is where they invite any member, but particularly the new members, uh, to help them get to know the club events and share their input as to what they would like to see changed. Um, the chat is chaired by a member from the membership committee, and um, she's really hoping that it's going to engage and revitalize the members um, with casual gathering. So we really appreciate that comment coming in. Uh, it's very similar to other, you know, other ideas that Haresh shared about really assessing at the club level. So at this point, feel free to send in um, any questions you have for Haresh or any other comments that you think would be beneficial to um, all of our attendees today. All right, we've got another one coming in. Um, Someone said, Haresh, uh, w our club wants to grow, uh, but won't let go of you know old traditions. How do we move forward without losing some of our older members? OK, thanks for that one. Several clubs are in the same boat, my friend, several clubs. Uh, the visioning exercise, as I mentioned earlier, so you're going to bring everybody into this room. Everybody is on equal territory, and then everyone has an opportunity to to talk about what they would like to see done in their club and you put it on a board, right? You write down these wonderful ideas and then everybody again gets an equal opportunity to go and vote on them. And all of a sudden you're seeing it narrowed down to what the shape of uh, and direction they want the club to go in. And it's very revealing even to those that are, that are entrenched in this tradition. When they start to see it unravel in front of their eyes, as to, the, as to you know, where the members want. It's very eye-opening, and in most cases, they have embraced it. Of course, there will always be the situation where they just cannot embrace this change, and we get that as well. But at the end of the day, my friends, you have to do what's beneficial for your membership and your club. And if you're going to have that one or two members that are holding back a club of 30 or 40, you, there's not much you can do. You, have, you can only sit with them, have a conversation with them, explain to them, this is the direction that the club wants to go in. And we really want you to be a part of it. You know, we really want you to even maybe be a part of steering that new direction forward. Maybe if you paint it in that picture, it might help. But most clubs have had success in making the change. A uh, few have had a few casualties, unfortunately, uh, with, with the member leaving. But we're hopeful that um, by, by embracing them and talking to them and, and making them feel that they are important to make this new experience possible, that they will stay and actually realize they, they need to be a part of it. Great. I think that's really great advice, Harish. Um It actually kind of is, is similar to a comment that we just received from Saad. And he said, we changed from two meeting locations, or, or two meeting locations, time and frequency. And potentially not everyone was, was willing, for the, willing to have that change, but they grew from 30 to 40 members in one year, which is really exciting. Um, Harish, another question that we had um, coming in, so, you know, the Shortarians, these are all really great ideas. Our club wants to make changes. We just don't know where to start. So what really is the first step or the first steps that you would recommend? Yeah, the first step is having conversation. You have to have the conversation with the members. And that can take the shape and or form in of several formats. You could go to them one-on-one. -on -one. You could invite them together in a very comfortable, casual atmosphere, maybe even a Rotarian home. You know, let me tell you something, my friends. Breaking bread at a Rotarian home changes the experience for everybody in that in, 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 in that gathering. You know, you, you get very comfortable, you get very cozy, and believe me, you become friends. So maybe having it at a Rotarian home, everybody gets together comfortably, and you have the conversation with them. Just have them talk very casually what they want to see done. And when you start to see what they're saying take shape, it becomes very easy to, make, to take the next step. Because then the buy-in is already there. Everybody heard what the feeling and the sentiment is. It's just making it into a reality. But having take the first step to me is having the conversation, and together is great. But if some people are sensitive, you could have one on ones as well. Great, thanks so much, Harish. We had a comment come in from Erica. Probably goes along the same lines um, with having this conversation and making change. She said, "Our club has transitioned from meeting every week to every first and third Thursday, and so far it's working great." We're happy to have uh, Rotary International push flexibility, um, and as a young president of her club. She's definitely embraced, embraced the flexibility heavily. Um, we had a question come in right after. It said, you know, if you have fewer meetings, how can you avoid this impacting your service project commitments? Harash, what do you think? 
Yeah, so I can speak to that very easily. There's a club that has actually switched to two meetings a month, but what they're doing, they're still meeting at the service project outside of those two meetings. So in, in, in essence, you, they're still seeing their fellow Rotarians maybe three or four times for the month, two times at the meeting, and then one time at an at a outreach or a service project, and maybe one time just as having a fellowship together, having a cup of coffee or happy hour or something. So ha changing your meeting frequency doesn't mean you're going to meet less often. It just means that there are just more uh, other opportunities as, um, as in meeting at a service project or just meeting for fellowship. Uh, and they, they, they're working great, so you could probably try that. Great. Um, another question coming in. Um, Wendy says, you know, what we can do with our member, what do we do with our members who can't or won't participate, no matter how fun our activities are? I got one comment from Colin, and Colin says, don't be afraid to think the unthinkable uh, when you're looking at where your club will be in five years' time. Um, his club has done just this, and everybody understood you know, what they wanted to do, and everybody came on board, new and experienced members alike. But I think Wendy's question is still pretty valuable. What do you do with the members who just won't participate? Okay, so again, having that conversation. In this case, I would say the one-on-one -on -one is probably more important. Talk to them, ask them what is their passion, you know, what is it that they enjoy doing. When you get to know that person and you realize all of a sudden you, you see that spark inside of them in something that maybe your club is, is not part of, you could actually tailor maybe a meeting just to spark that and have that individual actually be in charge for that meeting to see if it will, it will garner any interest. But that's one way I would go. If, 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 for example, let's say they, they, their, their passion is, is um, well, let's just say wine like me, you know, they love wines, but they're not interested in anything else. You could actually create a rotary event catered around that and maybe even do a service project based on, on that concept. But the point is, only when you meet with them and deep talk deep delving into, the, in, in, into what tick makes them tick, only then you will see that picture painted as to what is causing them to have that spark. And your club may not be addressing it. That's just a reality. It just may not be. But believe me, everybody has something. And if you can find what that is and you tailor that meeting to it, you'll be pleasantly surprised how you, how you re-engage that individual. Yeah, I think that's a really great response. I mean, coming back to your, you know, the concept of creating value and, you know, really identifying why Rotarians are, are in their clubs and what makes them tick. I think identifying what their value point is and, and recognizing that as a, as a leader is so important. Um, Teresh, we've got a great question from Ellen. She said, we have tremendous success in inducting new members, younger and female members. But we've not had have a lot of success in keeping them around long term. Um, once they're once they're there, do you have any suggestions for that retention aspect? Yeah. So again, say they join, you got them through the door. So something there was an interest that brought them in in the first place, but obviously maybe their expectations were not met, and they did not they were not getting value basically from Rotary. So again, it's you're going to have to go to them and say, okay, what would you like to see done at your cl at this club? You know, they are the ones who are going to tell you because the value proposition is going to come from them. They'll be more than happy to share with you, well, you know what, I came to the meeting and I was expecting to, to have some personal development and I didn't get it. And that's why I'm no longer interested. You could then say, okay, well, what type of personal development would you have liked to have seen? And then all of a sudden it's taking shape. You realize, okay, they would like to meet more, 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 more speakers that are in the industry of, say, let's say they were in IT or tech. You could probably invite some keynote speakers in that industry so that it would bring value to that member. So the conversation is what it's always all about. You have to talk to them, let them feel that they're important. Their comment is going to make a difference. And they are needed, and they are respected, and they are wanted. And I think once you start to have that, you'll realize all of a sudden you're good. Awesome. I absolutely love that. So we've had a lot of questions that are really focusing on, on Rotarians and, and internal. We've got a couple of questions that are look a little external, you know, external facing. Um, one of them is, do clubs in your, maybe in your region have or implement an awareness campaign to highlight the significant contributions to the community Rotary has made as a tool for recruitment? Yeah, there are several clubs have done that. And then that takes the shape of, of in various different elements. You could probably go to an area where many people from the community gather 
sometimes it's wholesale supermarket chains, sometimes it's just a, a fair that's going on in the community. And I've seen clubs set up booths, they've set up tents, and they have, they have got their projects outlined, they've got their members wearing the rotary uh, polo shirts, and basically they're talking to them, letting them know that, you know, what rotary is all about, you know, that they're making a difference in their community in these particular areas of focus. And just, just being out there and being visible, I've seen Rotarians participate in other uh, organizations' uh, fundraising activities. That's a great way. If you're going to want people to support you as well, you have to support them too. So going out there and supporting them is also great exposure for Rotary. And so there are many different opportunities. Look at what the opportunities in your community are taking place and then basically go in there and set up shop almost. Have a display, have a tent, have your members there, have your projects outlined, have a little brochure. And uh, I think these, just having that being out there and that presence uh, being seen in the community and being visible is very, very important. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think Rotarians do such amazing work and uh, highlighting the work we do in our communities and externally facing is so important to, to getting our brand out there and letting people know who we are. Um, Sandy has a, another external facing comment. She says, how do we combat the costs of Rotary? Uh, we're in a rural area and Rotary is one of the most expensive organizations to belong to. Do you have any advice here? Yeah, so the, the cost, of course, is, is an issue. Several clubs have, attract, have, 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 have tackled it by, by, by changing their venues so that there is no fixed cost for the venue. And um, several clubs have, have, have looked at other mechanisms of fundraising activities internally, of course, uh, to take care of their administrative expenses. But that's a challenge that several clubs do face. Uh, one of the things I will tell you is that the actual cost of being a Rotarian is not that expensive. The road international dues and your district dues, when you add it up, it's a little over $100 a year, which is $2 a week, uh, less than a cup of coffee. Now, approximately, give or take, I know some districts and, 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 and some areas might be slightly up or down, but that's just roughly approximately what it is. Now, the rest of it really is the club expense, so of course, where you meet, the cost of that venue plays a key role then you've got some other expenses uh, involved. So clubs have to really look at these other expenses and see how is it that we can be more creative in bringing those costs down. But I know several clubs have, have chopped those expenses and they're down to bare minimum and they're doing well. They've started growing again. Uh, the dues component is, has, is not an issue anymore as a result of cutting those expenses. So you have to revisit um, all your line items on your expense sheet and see what is it that's, that, that's relevant and important and what is it that, that, can be, that can be chopped? That's great. And we had a comment coming in from Art in Hawaii and, and kind of playing along with this. He said, you know, I think the new member recruitment and interview process is also really important because it has to be honest on what is expected to be a club member, um, and participation in projects, meetings, contributing, dues. So being honest up front will really help kind of filter that process in welcoming new members. Um, Gina also commented that new members should have a mentor, prospective members should have a mentor assigned to them from the get-go, someone from the membership uh, committee potentially, but definitely a mentor within the club who would be a person that makes them feel wanted and important and um, really recognizes their value. All very, very great comments. We appreciate that you're sending those in. Um, Harash, one more question that we received. Um, all the, uh, coming in from a Rotarian, all these great suggestions really rely heavily on, on club leaders uh, paying attention and taking action. So how do you encourage hesitant leaders to embrace change? Interesting, hesitant leaders. I've never quite heard that term before, but um, that's a good point. Okay, so if you're hesitant as a leader, uh, one of the things you can do is to get more people on board to, to be a part of that conversation and part of that decision making. So, so you remove the hesitancy from just that particular leader. So again, you embrace everybody. Invite even the newer members or those that don't have an active role to be a part of the committee. And you could probably have a committee called the, 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 you know, the, the moving forward committee or the new direction committee. And you in bring everybody together and maybe even make someone else the chair of that committee. It doesn't have to be the president or, or the leader in, uh, of membership, for example, or club administration. But that way you're getting a buy-in without b being worried about uh, a hesitant leader. Having other people involved and all the decisions being taken in a very open and transparent platform, I think that's the way to go. It's a collaborative effort. 
it's a joint effort of the members, it's a decision of the membership of what direction they want their member, their, their club to go in. So I don't think that'll be too much of an issue if you embrace others to come on board and give them the empowerment to help in the decision making process. Great, thanks so much, Harish. Um, we're getting a number of questions coming in um, regarding COL, council and legislation, which uh, Harish, you know, you did a great job talking about all of those um, new changes and flexibility. And just for all of our listeners, we, you know, we here at headquarters are working on on guides and and tools to better help you. Um, integrate some of these new flexibility options. Uh, those will be available in the next couple of months, so be on the lookout for those. It will be exciting when they come out, so um, it's really exciting news. All right, so what else do we have here? We've got a couple of you know great comments uh, just coming in from our, our listeners. Um, you know, some of, some of these comments might help some of you, but Mark said, our club uh, adopted new policies of paying only for the meals you eat. Uh, we've kept costs down for each member, so this kind of goes along with questions we had earlier about you know, paying attention to what your, your club members need and what will keep them around and, and help with retention rates. Um, comment from D, to increase their community awareness, also going back to a previous question, they have awarded Paul Harris fellowships to community leaders. Um, who are not Rotarians yet, um, especially if that person was involved in great causes. So really just working on some external awareness and internal awareness. Um, we've got a great question coming in from Ralph. What are some ideas to encourage self-motivation of members to engage? So not necessarily members who are in leadership roles, but just the motivation of your, of your members. Yeah, so you've got some members that are in the club and you're, you're trying to find some ways of, of engaging them. They're not on the board, they're not in a, in a committee, so there's no leadership opportunities. I will tell you, my friends, you, it is always great to have some sort of engagement for every member. So one of the things I would say to you is you need to find, find something for them to do, find something to empower them with. So having that conversation with them is the first step, asking them what their passions are, what their hobbies are, what they would like to see done uh, in their club or in their community. And once you, once you hear from them, then find something to give them to do it. Let's say they come and say, oh, you know, they would like to help uh, young future sailors of tomorrow. Then you could, as a club, you could find an outreach maybe with the, with the local uh, yacht club, for example, and maybe start a partnership and have that rotate and be the one bridging the gap between the club and that organization. But Talking to them, finding out what their passions and, 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 and their hobbies are is a great starting point. And then as a club leader, you have to find a way to get that engagement going with them. It's not going to happen on its own. Great. So we're wrapping up in our final minutes. Um, we've had amazing comments coming in, very positive responses to the information you shared today, Harish. Is there anything that you'd like to leave us with, like a final note, something that maybe you that's come to mind um, to put you on the spot a little bit more? <laughs> no, I think we shared it all. I, I just, just to reiterate, my friends, that uh, it is a changing time with Rotary, and you are uh, Rotary's future. Uh, the decisions you make, again, as I said before, is going to impact what the Rotary of tomorrow is going to look like. And it is, an, it is an awesome responsibility. I cannot stress it enough. And I believe that the, the decisions you make is going to really, really shape the new Rotary of tomorrow. So again, to, 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 to reinforce to you that Rotary's legacy is in your hands. And it is important that you have the conversation with your members, each and every one of them. Get a feeling from them of where they would like uh, Rotary to go. And then sit down and just start charting course together as a group, unified as one, for the betterment of Rotary, for the betterment of the experience of your members. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised when you, when you reevaluate at the end of the Rotary year. I think you'll be quite, quite happy with, with the direction you took. So all the best as you set sail for a great year ahead. I love it. Thank you so much, Harash. You have been an absolutely wonderful guest. Um, speaker today. And for all of those uh, who are still listening, um, we will be emailing you a link with the slides and recording of this webinar within the next two days or so. Um, also, right after we close the webinar, a survey will appear on your screen. So please take this time uh, 
to do the survey and you know it helps us better support you in the future and prepare for our webinars um, that are coming up. So Haresh, thank you again for for all of your inspirational words and advice. And to all of those who are listening, good luck in this upcoming year. We look forward to great changes um, within your clubs and exciting um, evolution of Rotary. Thanks.